Good morning, children. A very happy morning to all of you out there. Good morning. So, <clears throat> shall we proceed? Good. And uh, good morning. Good morning, guys. Very good morning to everyone out there in YouTube. Good morning and good morning to my children here. And uh, I think on the last turn we have completed till hemi data. Till hemi data it was over. hemi data. It is over. Good. Can you please tell me the excretory organ in hemi data? Excretory organ in hemi data. Come on. Yes, it is proboscis gland. Very good. Proboscis glands are the excretory organ in hemi data. Excretory organ in echinodermata. Excretory organ in echinodermata. Who will tell me? In echinodermata? No organ, it is absent. Very good. There is no excretory system. As such, there is no organ in echinodermata. Can you tell me in mollusca which structure help in excretion? Which structure help in excretion in mollusca? Yes, they have feather like gills. And where are the gills located? Gills are present in mollusca in, in the mantle cavity. In the mantle cavity, the gills are there. The mantle cavity, tell me the mantle cavity is uh, present uh, between, is present between dash and dash. Come on. Your options are mantle and visceral hump. Your options can be uh, visceral hump and muscular foot. Your options can be head and visceral hump. Yes, what is the answer? Answer is the first one. Yes, first one is correct, which is the mantle and the visceral hump. Very good. Very good, children. Some more questions. Uh, name a dioecious annelida. Dioecious annelida. Yes, it is nereis. Very good. It is nereis. The dioecious annelida. I want more and more people to answer. I think right now five, six people are immediately answering. Well, very good. Next question is, in which phylum will you place secoglosses? Secoglosses. Which phylum will you place secoglosses? It is hemicordata. But uh, any glosses. Because seco the hemicordates, they are called the uh, tongue worms, commonly called tongue worm, because of the proboscis, they look like trunk. You know, it's like from the mouth, the tongue is coming out. They are protruding the tongue like this. So all of them, because all of them have proboscis, they are called the tongue worm. And therefore, the scientific name has a tongue, like glosso, hemi, uh, balenoglossus, secoglossus. The tongue is there in the name because glosso means tongue. Glosso means tongue. Good. Next question. In which phylum will you keep pleurobrachia? Which phylum will you keep pleurobrachia? Pleurobrachia. It is in, yes, and only one, yes. Now I got the answer. It is tenophora. In tenophora, we'll keep pleurobrachia. Good. <clears throat> Next one is in which phylum? Will you keep ketopleura? Ketopleura. Ketopleura. And uh, ketopleura is, yes, it is mollusca, guys. It is mollusca. I think what is happening, reflection is coming on my eyes. And uh, maybe this is, uh, mm, what do you call that? Nah? That proof where you don't get the reflection. These glasses are not like that. Okay, next question, guys, uh, two more questions, last two questions left. In which phylum will you keep sea hair? Sea hair. Sea hair. Very good. It is mollusca. Scientific name of sea hair. <clears throat> Scientific A. Plicea. Very good. It is A. Plicea. Very, very good. Scientific name of pink tada. Pink Tada, sorry, 
द कॉमन नेम ऑफ पिंक टाडा सॉरी कॉमन नेम ऑफ पिंक टाडा इट इज पर्ल ऑयस्टर पर्ल एंड दैट डे आई वाज रिमेंबरिंग अबाउट द पर्ल यू नो आई वाज आस्किंग यू द जापानीज हु वाज द पायोनियर यू नो हु वाज इट जस्ट नो आई गॉट इट इट इज मिकी मोटो हिज नेम इज मिकी मोटो so mickey moto pearl so what he did you know he artificially uh, put this inside the by valve and uh, so he developed a technique how to give this foreign body inside this by valve and then as the natural process they are secreting the layer of calcium carbonate layer upon layer layer upon layer and that see every time it is not possible i told you that 9 out of 10 times is possible when the mickey moto tried for the first time he failed second time also he failed then slowly and slowly he developed because what happens if you open it and put it something some foreign body it will die but then he developed a technique that it it uh, it doesn't harm it and uh, the pearl can be found the pearl can be prepared okay tell me <clears throat> Echinodermata, they have an exoskeleton or endoskeleton. Exoskeleton or endoskeleton. I'm uh, yes, it is an endoskeleton. Echinodermata have an endoskeleton. Very good. And uh, name the phylum having exoskeleton of chitin. Exoskeleton of chitin. Chitinous exoskeleton. i want you to open your ncert book in the summary of the ncert book there is a line which which says underneath the mollusca that they have an uh, exoskeleton of chitin well i believe that this is a misprint that happened to them uh, there is no such fact uh, that the exoskeleton of chitin is present in mollusca so when you read the summary they have by mistake they have put that line that uh, in mollusca there is an exoskeleton of chitin now if you want to justify we can justify we can open the google and some scientists are there who have proven that in the larva there is a uh, you know chitin is found in some of the larva but this is all rationalization it is not true 100% the authors have by mistake they have done this by mistake they could not you know edit it properly and that is a blunder done by the authors anyways the last question of uh, then i start with uh, the chordate characters we started with the chordate character what is the one of the foremost chordate character which is the only one which can differentiate a chordate and a non chordate yes and that is a notochord the notochord present in the larva larva in the larva notochord is present that can make a chordate differentiate a chordate from a non chordate because it is not that the dorsal heart or ventral heart as such like that there is a ventral heart in case of uh, and there are pharyngeal gill slits in case of hemichordata hemichordata they have got the uh, dorsal nerve cord but because they don't have a notochord we don't call it and because it was a mistake that Uh, earlier scientists believe it to be a notochord it is a stomochord a stomochord and the last question name the three phyla which are exclusively marine in case of the non chordates sorry ha huh. three phyla tell me the name of the three phyla exclusively marine among the non chordates 1 2 and 3 come on tenophora very good the second one tenophora a kinodermata very good and the last one hemichordata good tenophora tenophora exclusively marine tenophora then we have a kinodermata very good a kinodermata and finally the hemichordata the hemichordata okay and uh, the last uh, three phylum that you see that in case of mollusca a kinodermata hemichordata they don't have a direct development they have only indirect development they have only indirect development among them the mollusca the mollusca they are oviparous the mollusca 
are oviparous and uh, even the arthropoda the arthropoda are also oviparous oviparous okay so mollusca and arthropoda are oviparous mollusca and arthropoda are oviparous my dear children and ne <clears throat> never forget among the non chordates that four phylum ppa these are having internal fertilization porifera then platyhelminths ascalmins and arthropoda they have internal fertilization let us begin with the chordate uh, phylum chordate uh, what makes the chordate different from non chordate is the presence of a uh, notochord now when this notochord is present let me start with phylum chordata dear children chordata phylum chordata must have a notochord in any stage of their life mainly in the embryo okay so they must have in the embryo they must have a notochord and if it is there we we call them phylum chordata phylum chordata can be divided into three sub phylum and you can remember by ucb ucb three sub phylum dear children u stand for eurochordata eurochordata c for cephalochordata and v for vertebrata vertebrata eurochordata they are also known as the tunicata they are also called tunicata why we call them tunicata because they have a tunic a tunic means a coat so a special polysaccharide makes a tunic okay so tunic means a coat therefore they are also called tunicata the cephalochordata <clears throat> the cephalochordata they are commonly called amphioxus amphioxus uh, they are the true chordates they are the true chordates you can demonstrate the chordate characters in cephalochordata the vertebrata are also known <coughs> as craniata craniata <clears throat> why we call them craniata because they have a cranium and cranium means the brain box the bony or cartilaginous structure which encases the brain even the vertebral column may be bony or cartilaginous and that houses the spinal cord the vertebral column supports the uh, spinal cord and cranium supports the brain and both of them are present in case of vertebrata because cranium is present we can also call them craniata now in eurochordata euro means tail why <coughs> tail is used here because the uh, notochord now where is this notochord found it is found in the tail of larva only in the larva that i am writing only only one place you can find it and that to the tail of the larva in cephalochordata thankfully it is from the head to tail head to tail of larva and uh, of course it is present in larva but it also persist throughout life it persist persist throughout life we are talking about the notochord so notochord is present from head to tail extending from the head and therefore cephalo means head cephalo means head and vertebrata in them the notochord is replaced notochord is present in the embryo but it is replaced by vertebral column vertebral column in some both are present it is not completely replaced for example in case of chondriacthes in case of cartilaginous fishes both are present they have both notochord plus the vertebral column now how it, how it is possible actually they have a vertebral column and inside the main body of the vertebra which is called the centrum of the vertebra the centrum of the in the inside the centrum of the vertebra they have the notochord is still present there 
So notochord is not completely replaced them in them. Okay. So please understand that chondriaxis has both notochord as well as vertebral column in throughout their life. Well, uh, let me say about urochordata, beta urochordata and cephalochordata. They both are exclusively marine. Both are exclusively marine. So this is also exclusively marine. And this is also exclusively marine. And uh, the urochordates, they, are, they don't move as such. They are fixed. They are sedentary. They are sedentary. Sedentary, okay. They are also known as, also known as, sea squirts. They are called the sea squirts. Squirting, squirting means where the water is, uh, or any fluid is uh, thrown as a jet, you know, from a small, from a small opening. For example, we have the perfume bottle. So in the perfume bottle, the small hole is there. And from there, a stream of fluid comes out. So that is squirting, squirting. They are called the sea squirts because, because you know, the fluid is being pushed out. They have two openings. So water enters from one opening and the other opening, they push out the fluid. They do the squirting as if, you know, I put uh, water in my mouth and I make a stream out of that. So that's what they are doing. Therefore, they are called C squirts. For the examples, you can learn you can learn them as Sudha. Please learn Sudha. S stands for Salpa. They are Eurocordates, Eurocordates, not to forget. D for doliolum. Doliolum. This is herd mania. Herd mania. Okay. And A stands for SCDA. SCDA. A stands for SCDA. <clears throat> Only one name is not there in the NCRT, which is herd mania. However, all these names are there. They are also called tunicates. So I remembered, I can remember it like T Sudha also. So the name T Sudha, that means T stands for tunicate, S for salpa. Eurocordata, doliolum, herdmania, acidia. Only one name is additional, which is, I said, herdmania. All these points are given in the textbook. Just remember about them. They are exclusively marine. They are the typical chordates. Notochord persists throughout life. So you can demonstrate notochord even after birth. You can demonstrate the notochord. That means we can call them as true chordates. They are called the true chordates. Then, <clears throat> what else you should know about them? They are commonly known as lancelets. In fact, the common name is lancelets. Lancelets. You know, lance, lance means balam. Lance. Lance means balam. I hope you know Ballam or maybe I am pronouncing it correctly. Ballam. Ballam. You know, you have that and then you can. Ballam. The Neeraj Chopra, he uses a Ballam. Ballam. You understand Ballam? Lance. Am I saying it correctly? Bhala is what the Hindi word is, but I'm, I have learned the name Ballam. Which, is, which means bhala or the lance. They are called lancelets because you will find their bodies are like a lance in water. In the ocean, in the sea, you will find a lance-like. You can see them as long, it's cylindrical, lance-like. So <clears throat> this is a common name, cephalocordata. Then the head to tail of larva, notochord is present, even it persists after life. They are exclusively marine. Example. Now just remember the example as branchiostoma. Branchiostoma. Gill-mouthed. Gill-mouthed. 
branchiostoma, also known as amphioxus. Amphioxus, also called amphioxus. Branchiostoma, also called amphioxus. Okay? So that is cephalocordata. Just remember this much. After that, vertebrata. And vertebrata is the biggest one, the biggest subphylum. Remember, guys, these phylum chordata, these three are subphyla. The vertebrata subphyla is the largest subphylum. Please uh, learn all these points so that I can move to the next one. Any problem? Any problem? Voice problem? Anything? No problem. Okay, very good. Dear children, now, uh, now I am turning to the page. And let us do the classification of subphylum vertebrata. Subphylum vertebrata. Vertebrata. Beta, we can divide the subphylum vertebrata as agnatha and gnathostomata. As agnatha. Hello. One o'clock. One o'clock, huh? Hmm. Okay, sir. So I hope subphylum vertebrata can be divided into ignatha and gnathostomata. Gnatha word, it means jaw, jaws. A means absent. They, that means they are jawless. We can commonly call them jawless fishes, beta. We can commonly call them jawless fishes. And gnatho means jaws. Stoma means mouth. The mouth is surrounded by jaws. Jawed mouth. So these are the modern one. They are the jawed fishes. The modern fishes are the jawed fishes. They are the primitive one, primitive vertebrates. And uh, see, most of them have become extinct. There are two main classes here of Strachodermae, and now it has become extinct. So only one uh, class is present here. And you know what is the class name? The class is called cyclostomata cyclo means round and stomata means mouth they have a round suctorial mouth they have a round suctorial mouth and you know why they have a suctorial mouth anyone can think of why they have a suct or how the suctorial mouth can help them see they don't have jaw so they cannot do any uh, chewing work or anything but the round suctorial mouth help them to suck the yes they are huh? sucking okay 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 you know what is happening with <laughs> the glasses are not giving me a correct image from distance i read it something else class cyclostomata these are the suctorial mouth they have a round suctorial mouth without jaws they are Ectoparasites, all of them are ectoparasites, ectoparasites on other fishes, on other fishes. This is a very unique feature about them, ectoparasites on other fishes. But sir, these are exclusively marine. Again, these are found only in the sea, don't find them because where you can find the large fishes, only there they can survive, they cannot survive any other place. Okay, this is a cyclostome. This is a cyclostome. Cyclostome. Okay, then they are marine. They are ectoparasite, a very important point. All of them. See, the complete phylum is ectoparasite. This is a very unique feature on them. Okay, very good. Do you know the phylum where most of the members are endoparasites? Come on. It doesn't look good that I'm... If I don't ask questions now, uh, and when I get the answers, I get a very good connection. 
Yes, platyhelminthes, most of them are endoparasites, platyhelminthes, but it is still, do you know any free living platyhelminth? Any free living platyhelminth? Hint, we use them in the laboratory, we cut them and you, we can demonstrate the regeneration power. Do you remember any such thing? Hmm? Any platyhelminth which is used? Yes, this is Dugesia. Very good, Dugesia or Planaria. It's a good answer, but not many. Only three people have given that. Dugesia or Planaria. Hmm? Good. Do you know any uh, phylum where some, some members are parasites on even plants? Some members are they are the root parasites. They are the root parasites. And answer is Ascalminthes. Priyanka, I'm, I'm very happy with the, with swiftly you answered. I will be most happy if you can answer. Can you name any example of an Ascalminth, which is a root parasite? Any example, any example. If you don't, I'll help you. Ascaris? No, ankylostoma, what is the human mouth? I was of ankylostoma in the small intestine, duodenal. It is in the duodenum. No, tumefacients, tumefacients. So it is not a round worm, beta. Tumefacients is not a round worm. Okay, ha ha ha. This suha, yes, yes, yes. Melody gyni in cognitia. Meloidy gyne incognita. Meloidy, meloidy gyne incognita. Have you heard about this? Meloidy gyne incognita. Yes, so everyone should know. This is an example of a round worm. That day I wanted to ask this question, I just forgot. So today I remember the, mo the moment I saw this ectoparasite, I remember to ask you the one which is parasitic to plants biotech application yes 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 in biotech application also this would be given okay meloidy gyne incognita good it is a round worm it is a nematode parasite to plant these are the ectoparasites on other fishes what else we know about them is that yeah they have six to 15 pairs 6 to 15 pairs of gills. 6 to 15 pairs of gills. There are... I'm not sure. 6 to 15 pairs of gills. Then they don't have... There are... Absence of... Scales, scales are not present. The paired fins are not present. Paired fins, paired fins are absent. Paired fins are absent. These are the very, very important thing. Paired fins are absent. Now, very special feature about them, they can migrate. Yes, you remember? They can migrate to river they can migrate to river for spawning. For spawning, spawning means laying of eggs. They migrate to the river for spawning and there the hatching of the larva, the hatching of the eggs takes place, okay? So egg hatches, hatching of the egg take place and then the larva is born. And then the larva is born. The larva is transformed into the adult, a baby fish. It's a juvenile fish. It's a juvenile fish. And this juvenile fish then returned to the sea. This juvenile fish returned to the sea. So this now up to juvenile fish, and it's a process of returning. So when it comes in the sea, it becomes a juvenile fish. Point is, the adults, the mummy papa, they don't come back. Here, the parents sacrifice the life. The parents sacrifice the life there. 
their life. For the next generation, the parents sacrifice the life. They have a special name of the larva, which is called MOCT larva. MOCT larva. And it is very easy to remember because when the parents die, the young babies, they are very, uh, very sad. They are crying, ammo, 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 ammo. Okay, although I am making a fun of something very, very touching, but then better somehow we, we have to remember that MOCT larva here from ocean because they are marine. They are exclusively marine, but they can migrate to water. They can migrate to river for spawning and there the parents sacrifice the life. When the parents die, the adults die, they became the fish for many of the uh, mammals. So it is an ecosystem in which this is destined so that it is win-win for all of them who are interdependent. Please understand that they have got migration and this type of migration where they go to the river is called anadromous migration. The type of migration where when they go to the seawater is known as catadromous. So here, the adults migrate to river. It is called anadromous migration, anadromous. However, I'm not sure about, I, I don't think so, that migration will be asked. But yes, you should know the examples. Examples, very, very important. And mixine, mixine, <coughs> hagfish. Mixine, also called hagfish. Then petromyzon, petromyzon. Petromyzon, also called lamprey. Petromyzon, also called lamprey. But only remember these two. And for heaven's sake, don't get confused with these two. The fellow coordinator, they are cyclostomata vertebrates. Okay, sometimes some examples are written in cephalocordata. No, cephalocordata only remember branchiostoma, amphioxus, branchiostoma, amphioxus, AB, amphioxus, branchiostoma. And these examples like mixine, petromyzon, these are in <coughs> cyclostomes. Hmm? So I hope you understand that's about the cyclostomes. Can I revise it once again? Okay, so phylum vertebrata can be divided into agnatha and gnathostomata. Agnatha means without jaw, gnathostomata means with jaws. Agnatha, <coughs> so only one extent. Extent means living class, and the name is cyclostomata. Cyclostomata means cyclo means round and stomata mouth. The mouth is round and suctorial. Why they are, they 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 need a suctorial mouth? Because they have to. They are ectoparasites. So they have to cling to the surface of the fish of other uh, other fishes and they have to draw the nutrition from them. This is their basic habit. And uh, so they are ectoparasites on other fishes. The gills are 6 to 15 pairs of gills. Such a big number of gills are only found in cyclostomes. In the modern fish, you will not find these many uh, number of gills, hardly four in case of uh, osteoctetes and uh, five, six, uh, seven, maximum seven in case of chondriocteus. But here it is six to 15. This you have to remember. Uh, scales are absent here. Body is not covered by scales. So what is not there? No scale, no paired fin. No scale, no paired fin. They show migration to river water for spawning. Spawning means for giving, uh, for laying the eggs. There the hatching takes place and the babies, the, the, the larva hatch out. The adults die there and they become the food for many mammals who are very hungry and because this is happening just after the winter weather. So those are hungry and they, they were hiding into their places because of too much of cold outside. So that is, you know, that's such a big, uh, you know, um, ecosystem is there that they go there, they die when they really want them, they, when the mammals really come out to have their food. Okay, so this is a very good, uh, you know, uh, coordination in them. The <clears throat> larva, it uh, transforms into the adult. 
the first the juvenile fish and the juvenile fish it migrate to the ocean the juvenile fish migrate to the ocean and uh, the trick I, I told you because the adults die and you remember this story about cyclostomata so it will help you to remember the name of the larva because this is a very painful thing that as the birth of the baby takes place the parents die so they are just crying for their amma ammo 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 like that and uh, with this you can remember the MOCT larva is the larva of cyclostomes. Please uh, open your NCRT and please confirm that the transformation into adult is given in the river or whether it occurs inside the ocean. Because I know that this is a little controversial given, but we have to follow our NCRT thing only. If they say that transformation occur in the river and then they go to the you know, ocean, then it's fine. Then our point is fine otherwise you know we will i will you know correct it please confirm anyone ha huh. jyotika to abhi transformation okay so where is the transformation to into adults happen in river or in uh, ocean your yeah, jyotika we are saying ocean transformation in river yes suha i am thinking about that Priyanka saying in ocean. Okay, well, I'll open my copy and let's be confirmed about this, children, because these are the small, small issues where it is not good to lose marks. Okay, and uh, well, let's open this one. Coordinator, P and D, which are the basic coordinate characters, and uh, we'll talk about that also. This is Ignatha, Ignatha Stomata, and uh, okay, and here let's come. Cyclostomata, they have elongated body, bearing six to fifteen pairs of gill slits for respiration. Cyclostomes have a sucking and circular mouth without jaws. Their body is devoid of scales and paired fins. So what are not there? Paired fins also not there and scales are absent. Cranium and vertebral column are cartilaginous. Circulation is of close type. Cyclostomes are marine but migrate to for spawning to fresh water. After spawning, within a few days they die. Their larva after metamorphosis, return to the ocean. After metamorphosis. So that means transformation is occurring in the river only. Right? Transformation is occurring in the river. Okay? So I think the I have written it correctly. No need to change beta. So what we have written that after the larva transform into juvenile fish and this juvenile fish then it comes to the sea so before the sea it was a fish already okay after transformation come to the sea make sense okay guys i think this is all done and uh, circulatory system is a uh, uh, closed type okay however circulatory system is open in both the seas for example, uh, the C like uh, uh, cephalocordate, cyclostome, in both of them, it is closed type. It is closed type, okay? Whereas in eurocordata, it is open type. However, NCRT has not mentioned this. NCRT says that all chordates, I mean, in general, all chordates have closed circulatory system. But the oldest chordate, the most primitive chordate, the protochordate, it is the uh, eurochordate, it's the most primitive chordate, also called protochordate. Both cephalochordate and eurochordate are called protochordate. In eurochordate, the circulatory system is which type? Open type. So only that is the chordate where the circulatory system is open type. In all the complete chordata, it is closed type. Makes sense, but because only one small subphylum is there, we have to generalize, and to generalize, we can say 
Chordate means closed. Non-chordate means open except one phylum. Non-chordate means open circulatory system. Chordate means closed circulatory system. Non-chordate means open circulatory system. Do you know the exception here? Who can tell me the exception? Exception in non-chordate, beta. Anelida. Very good, Priyanka. Anelida. Very good, Anelida. In Anelida, they have a closed circulatory system. Most of them. I'm not saying all of them, but most of them. Well, beta, that is good now. Now, let me talk about the gnathostomata. Gnathostomata can be divided into two categories. Gnathostomata can be divided into two categories. How to differentiate them? One of the class is called Pisces. Pisces means fishes. Fish means true fish. Now, this is fish. Cyclostome, circular mouthed fish. But they are false fish. They are not the, the jawed fish are the true fishes. Let me talk about the gnathostomata. Let us all, let's come to gnathostomata. So you can just imagine those who are doing it on that page only. So I will leave this one, U and C. And this is, no, sorry. Already vertebrata. Vertebrata is divided into Ignatha and Gnatho and Ignatha. Gnathostomata. We have two classes here. So one of the class is Pisces. Pisces. And one of the class is called Tetrapoda. Tetrapoda. In Pisces, they have got paired fins. Paired fins. In Tetrapoda, they have got paired Two pairs of ling limbs. Two pairs of limbs. Yes, paired limbs are there, but two pairs of limbs, therefore, it became four legged, four legged tetrapoda. Pisces paired fin. We all know better the two types of Pisces. One is called chondriacthes. And one is called osteichthyes. In chondriacthyes, the entire skeleton is made up of cartilage. In osteichthyes, the entire skeleton or majority of the skeleton is made up of bone. Chondro means cartilage, osteo means bone. So they can also be called as cartilaginous fishes. Cartilaginous fishes, cartilaginous fishes, but they can also be known as elasmobranch, 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 uh, leave it, so many alternate names, so till what you will remember, this is enough, cartilaginous fish, osteochthys are the bony fish, Bony fishes. They also have an alternate name. Hmm? So don't don't pay attention, otherwise confusion may happen. But uh chondriacthys and osteochthys, they have some basic differences, and in on those differences, questions will be asked. I'll show one chondriacthys and try to find out what all points that you can understand from the diagram. On that diagram, we will base our uh, so now I'll show the diagram, okay? So, streamline body. The tail is also not equal. It's unequal tail and it's streamlined. So it's more streamlined. So it's looking a little, it's more of, This is their subterminal mouth. Subterminal mouth. In this subterminal mouth, the teeth are backwardly placed. Backwardly directed teeth are there. Backwardly directed teeth are there. 
they have got about five to seven gill slits, pharyngeal gill slits. Five to seven pharyngeal gill slits. But as you can see that they are open, there is no cover over them. There is no cover over them. They are open. Okay. What else you know about them? That the scales, the scales are like very sharp, very sharp scales. Teeth like, placoid means toothed. Teeth like, placoid. The scales are very sharp. These scales are called placoid scales. Placoid scales. But uh, these teeth are modified, modified placoid, placoid scales. Teeth are modified placoid scales. What else you know about them? So they keep on uh, swimming, okay? So there is no air bladder inside. There is no air bladder inside. They keep on swimming. In the males, in the males, the pelvic fin, the pelvic fin in the males, uh, this is The pelvic fin has got two pointed rod-like structures. These are known as claspers. So claspers are present in the males only. And uh, they are present in the pelvic fins. Pelvic fins. These claspers are pointed and rod-like. Two of them are there. And you can understand what they are used for. So they are used for copulation. They are used for copulation. The act of transferring the gametes inside the female body is copulation. When you know that copulation is going on, so where is the fertilization beta? So fertilization, fertilization is internal. Fertilization is internal. Also remember that these are viviparous. These are viviparous. Fertilization is internal. Copulation, fertilization is internal. They are viviparous. They give birth to young one. They are viviparous. They give birth to young one. Do you know what? Who are these? These are the <laughs> chondric thieves. Sharks. Sharks. Rays, rays, <clears throat> skates, these are. They are nitrogenous waste. Their nitrogenous waste is urea. Their nitrogenous waste is urea. That is again different from the case of bony fish. In bony fish, it is ammonia. Bony fish, it's ammonia. Bony fish have got a cover here. In bony fish, four pairs here. And it is covered by operculum. There's no such operculum here. And uh, so most of them are uh, marine. In fact, we can say that they are exclusively marine. Exclusively marine. They are exclusively marine. Please understand that. Exclusively marine. The protocordates are exclusive. Uh, protocordates exclusively marine. Pondry thief exclusively. Exclusively marine, and uh, yes, the these two are exclusively marine. Protocordates and chondric teeth are exclusively marine. Among the case of the chordates, protocordates and chondric teeth are exclusively marine. Be careful if the question comes, which of the following is the marine phylum? In that, we will not write chondric teeth, bacha, because chondric teeth is not a phylum name. It's not a phylum name. It is a class. In terms of phylum, we have Tenophora, we have uh, Echinodermata, and the third one is uh, we have uh, Hemichordata. Hemichordata. Dear children, uh, these are <clears throat> some of the points that we can understand from the picture. 
and this compare this can be compared to the bony fish so in the bony fish if i compare in the bony fish there is a cover here and which is known as operculum in bony fish they have four pairs of gills four pairs of gills they have a gill cover called operculum operculum in the bony fish they have got the terminal mouth they have got a terminal terminal mouth they have got a terminal mouth and uh, the tail is also homocircle in bony fishes the tail is also homocircle the tail is also homocircle but here it is heterocircle you can see heterocircle not not equal but in case of bony fish it is homocircle tail terminal mouth the scales in the bony fishes and even who remember they are called cycloid scales or a, may, maybe even like like this or they can be called as ganoid so ganoid or cycloid scales are there and uh, there is a air bladder air bladder present air bladder present and therefore they need not to uh, swim every time the air bladder provide buoyancy buoyancy that help in their floating so that help in their floating but here there is no such floating organ so if they want to be up they have to quick every time swim actively then only they can maintain but here you know once they get a particular uh, you know depth then according they can um, they can change the air in the air bladder so according to that air which can provide the buoyancy to remain in that level uh, so they can now free they can become free here the fertilization is external fertilization is external external here the birth takes place they are oviparous reproduction they are oviparous but those are viviparous in case of bony fish bony fish are a monotelic bony fish are a monotelic bony fishes are a monotelic but in case of the chondrichthys these are ureotelic i have told you these are ureotelic but here they are a monotelic so let me just count how many points we have differentiated them number 1 four pairs of gills then gill cover operculum terminal mouth scales are uh, uh, cycloid or ganoid scales fourth point air bladder is present here and therefore they need not to every time uh, swim fertilization is external in them they are oviparous and they are a monotelic i think eight points are enough to differentiate them points are enough of course we have to remember the examples but these points are uh, enough and in case of the chondrichthys the teeth are modified placoid scale the teeth are very sharp okay so they are very sharp they are teeth the placoid scales are very sharp they are teeth like placoid means teeth like toothed in fact the teeth are also backward directed here the teeth are backwardly directed make sense all points are clear okay examples can we come to the examples guys can we so this diagram while making the diagram so many points can remember we can remember and uh, well let us come here and examples of chondrichthys i told you that sharks all the mighty sharks are chondrichthys one of the shark called dogfish is called yodon is called yodon also called the dogfish all these sharks they have a tremendous power of smell they can smell like dog all of them they can smell like dogs they can smell like dogs okay even if their eyes become poor still they can identify they can smell like dogs any vertebrate blood they can smell from distance make sense beta aur batao scoliodon after that number 
we have the stingray, stingray, okay. Uh, trigon. Trigon stingray. Pristis sawfish. <laughs> Pristis sawfish, okay. Pristis. Sawfish, there are some more names of NCRT, for example, there is a uh, called Car, Carodon, Car, C-H-A-R-O, Car, Carodon, it is the great white shark, great white shark. Car Carodon, great white shark. This is a man eating shark. Car Carodon, a dawn with two car. It's a very great dawn. Great, great white shark. Car Caro, two cars are there in this dawn. This dawn is a single one, so it's just a dogfish. But this is a great white shark. My dear children, these are the examples of the conjectures. Let us come to the Ostiochthys, but uh, let me just confirm any more examples in the textbook are given. So we will, we cannot leave any example from the textbook. Okay. Uh, examples, Coliodon, then we have Carcarodon, Great White Shark, Pristis is Sawfish, and Trigon is a Stingray. Just these names. It's Coliodon, Dogfish, Pristis, Sawfish, Carcarodon is Great White Shark. And trigon is the stingray. File fine. Now let us talk about the osteoctis. I think all these points, air bladder, operculum, and they have got a four, mouth is terminal, and they have got four pairs of gills. Please underline this. They have four pairs of gills. Please underline this. Four pairs of gills. Edible fishes, edible fishes, yes please, we have got labio, labio, we have got katla, we have got magur, labio, also called rohu, ragandi, katla, also called katla, magur, <coughs> Magur, Ma Magur, Magur, <clears throat> Magur is the common name, Magur, 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 Clarias, Magur <clears throat> or Magur, Clarias, 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 Gary Pinus. Magur, edible fish, katla, clarias, magur, okay, and freshwater fish, labio rohu, labio rohu ragandi. Yes, these are freshwater, edible freshwater fishes, katla is katla, and perias is magur, okay? Then some marine fishes are there, for example, the exocetus and hippocampus. Exocetus and hippocampus and aquarium fish is pterophyllum, such a beautiful, uh, this is angel fish, it's a, such big, big fins are there, hairy fin, it's called angel fish, and betta, it's a, 
golden orange fish betta also called fighting fish they don't fight but the name is fighting fish aquarium fishes aquarium fishes okay so uh, edible fishes labio katla clarias labio katla clarias labio these are katla clarea these are uh, river fishes or fresh water edible fresh water edible fishes okay now the marine water fishes do you remember the marine water one is exocetus exocetus this is flying fish you have seen this flying fish in the movie life of a pi exocetus flying fish in the movie life of a pi where the pi was trapped in ocean and you know in the night time uh, so fishes many fishes in big group they just jumping and they are taking a very high jump and long jump and they are crossing his boat do you remember do you remember that movie life of a pi okay and so he was in ocean he saw the flying fish he was in ocean marine so this is a marine fish and then the sea horse the name itself is sea horse it is also called the hippo the hippocampus hippo in the campus hippocampus also called the sea horse hippocampus sea horse the <clears throat> aquarium fishes aquarium fishes beta two important one one is called pterophyllum pterophyllum phylum what is the name pterophyllum this is the angel fish angel fish pterophyllum and the other one is betta the golden orange one betta this is called the fighting fish the fighting fish and these are the examples given in the textbook i believe that all the points of osteoxys and chondrocytes have been discussed by me i want the student to please go through the textbook of Uh, contrixes and osteoxys and tell me if any point that we have missed about contrixes and osteoxys any point that we have missed so that please because it will help you to revise from the textbook also come on poikilothermus point poikilothermus but uh, except the uh, birds and mammals all are poikilothermus only birds and mammals are homeothermus theek hai beta only birds and mammals are homeothermous remaining all are poikilothermous theek okay? hai what else dekho beta chudu what else any other point which is left which is given in the textbook which we left okay tell me what is the uh, common the scientific name of hagfish scientific name of hagfish 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 mixine Which phylum it belongs? Which phylum? Okay, phylum. ठीक है. In which uh, class it belongs? Class. It is a cyclostomata. It is in phylum Chordata, and it is cyclostomata class. Cyclostomata. Tell me, uh, what is the common name or what is the scientific name of uh, cuttlefish? Scientific name of cuttlefish and phylum. Scientific name and phylum. Come on, cuttlefish. Sepia and phylum Mollusca. Very good. Phylum Mollusca and Sepia. Another fish, silver fish. Silver fish. In the old books, when you have opened the old books, you could have seen some silvery thing coming out. It is called silver fish. I am giving you the hint. In old books, your your papa uh, your you know father mother books or your grandparents books you will find it is arthropoda silver fish is a, it is an arthropoda it is a insecta it is a primitive wingless insect primitive wingless insect primitive wingless insect come on scientific name and phylum of uh, devil fish devil scientific name and phylum of devil fish 
एट लेग्स लाइक अ डेविल एट लेग डेविल ऑक्टोबर्थ मॉलस का वेरी गुड इवन इफ यू राइट शॉर्ट फॉर्म आई विल बी हैप्पी सो फार ओनली टू पीपल आर आंसरिंग वन इज टू वन एस डी एंड वन इज प्रियंका नो प्लीज एटलीस्ट टेन मेंबर्स इन द क्लास मस्ट बिकॉज दैट्स अ पर्पज यू नो आई एम मेकिंग यू रिवाइज दिस एंड आई एम ऑल्सो कॉन्फिडेंट दैट yes you will be able to and you know while doing that some of the questions pop up in the mind for example silver fish i know that silver fish is not mentioned in the ncert that i know but it is better if we have mentioned it okay and uh, maybe in the options it may come it's a very common one silver fish okay now tell me uh, the <clears throat> Angel fish, angel fish, phylum leather class. Which which one is the nearest one? If it is phylum, or if it is a class, then only answer class. If there is no class, then the phylum you can name. Okay. Yes, it is osteichthys, and yes, angel fish is scientific name. Pterophyllum, pterophyllum. so such large fins are there and long hairy it look like it has got wings therefore the name pterophyllum pterophyllum okay pteropus patero pteropus pteropus common name in the class pteropus common name yes it is bat or flying fox and it is mammalia pteropus is mammalia very good good okay next please tell me jellyfish jellyfish scientific name and phylum jellyfish aurelia jyotika very good and phylum very good nidaria saujanya very good phylum nidaria aurelia very good now tell me flying fish scientific name and class flying fish scientific name class flying fish exo out na water se bahar aana padega it has to come out of water exo exocetus exocetus okay and it belongs to osteichthys and is it in uh, uh, marine water or fresh water marine water or fresh water it is a marine water okay very good uh, name uh, okay to which class the common carp belongs common carp to which class common carp belong yes priyanka i am really impressed by this answer who will else answer this question i am impressed by your answer common carp fresh water marine water priyanka fresh water marine water ha huh, animal husbandry good 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 common carp common carp fresh water marine water ah not marine fresh water carp are actually fresh water fishes common carp are the fresh water fishes okay these are fresh water edible fishes common carps common carp okay now tell me the scientific name of magur magur scientific name of magur magur very good it is clarias magur clarias clarias very good have you have ever heard about this clarias in uh, uh, ecology in ecology i'll give the hint of the chapter it is biodiversity chapter in ecology in what context clarias gary pinus name has come in what context clarias gary pinus clarias gary pinus fresh water nayak okay what else what else you know about them
Clarias is a fresh water one. In uh, something, introduction of something led to the extinction of something, something. Have you remember that? Yes, led to the extinction of endogenous, endogenous fish, okay? And uh, Clarias geripinus, Clarias geripinus. So Clarias geripinus, is it, endogen it, is it indigenous uh, uh, animal or it is exotic animal? Clarias geripinus, indigenous animal or exotic animal? This particular geripinus species. Yes, it is, <coughs> it is a foreign one. It is a exogenous. We can call it as, a, this is a, introduced from outside. And uh, these are called the, uh, <coughs> we can call them as a, a invasive species. These are foreign species which become invasive foreign species which become invasive. Invasive means they, uh, they consume more uh, resources than they are supposed to do on the cost of our endogenous or indigenous animals. Okay, Clarias, Magur. And uh, two more questions. The scientific name of great white shark. Scientific name of great white shark Car Carodon, very good. It is Car Carodon, two car, a dawn with a two car. He's a white, he's also great, great white shark. Car Carodon, it is a man eating shark. Car Carodon is the man eating shark, man eating shark. Car Carodon, okay. Then dogfish, 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 scientific name dogfish. Scolio, scolio dawn, scolio, scolio dawn, dawn with the scolio, scolio dawn. Very good. And uh, what else you can remember? The larval name of cyclostomes. Larval name of cyclostomes. MOCT, MOCT larva, MOCT larva. So easy to remember now. And tell me the scientific name of lamprey. Lamprey, L-A-M-P-R-E-Y, Lampreys, Petromyzon, and I think one thing I just missed, Vita, the difference between chordates and non-chordates. The typical chordate characters are P and D, P and D, paired pharyngeal gill slits, paired pharyngeal, paired, and ekra pharyngeal gill slits, number one. Okay, number two chordate character is P and D. Okay, the nerve cord, they have a dorsal and single hollow nerve cord and uh, P and D. N for notochord and D for dorsal nerve cord, dorsal hollow nerve cord. So please remember these are the typical and uh, most important chordate characters. These three are the most important chordate characters. Dear children, so it is better to underline the same language which is used here. Is it given as the most important or the typical chordate? Okay, P and D. Here it is given. Here, okay. Animals belonging to phylum chordate are fundamentally characterized. Fundamental chordate characters. Better fundamental chordate characters. And I can make you remember as P and D. So P stand for paired uh, pharyngeal gill slits, paired pharyngeal gill slits, N for notochord, D for dorsal, dorsal nerve cord, dorsal single hollow, dorsal single hollow nerve cord. Fundamental chordate characters, dorsal single hollow nerve cord, paired pharyngeal gill slits, and the notochord. These are bilaterally symmetrical triploblastic table. Now, <clears throat> there are some other chordate characters. For example, the other chordate character is <clears throat> heart is ventral. In chordates, heart is ventral. 
in caudates heart is ventral and caudates have a post anal tail so bachcha this is anus this is anus and this is a post anal tail post anal tail and i want you to please complete this exercise just just one exercise i'll give it today but just you complete this one which i am just sharing with you just give me one minute and we open the ppt file here the moment you open the ppt file it goes second pptx ppt file we call our adobe microsoft word and microsoft powerpoint this file please identify bachcha identify one please identify one 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 is mouth two two paired pharyngeal gill slits paired pharyngeal of course you cannot see pair right now but actually they are paired pharyngeal gill slits three three anus very good three is anus four post anal tail very good five five notochord sojourner are good five is notochord and six is six nerve cord very good six is nerve cord and uh, seven seven you might uh, may not identify so seven are the segmented muscles so these are the segmented muscles in caudate embryo these are segmented muscles and uh, i hope you get this is a textbook one textbook one and in textbook they have not labeled these are the segmented one in this we have labeled seven one is segmented muscles segmented muscles and they have also given this one and uh, so please remember that other caudate characters is about their heart and tail heart and tail okay so three are the fundamental pnd and two more are the present the placement of heart and the type of tail it's post anal tail these are the caudate characters okay then uh, guys uh, uh, well <clears throat> i i wanted to show you the lancelets lancelets they look like bullum you know this type of lance this is a body of a lancelet it is a body of a lancelet which sub phylum animals are called lancelets it's a honestly it's a last question and the class will be over which sub phylum animals are also called lancelets cephalocordata two people have answered very good three people have answered and that's very good and butcher this class is over all the very best and uh, please please like this test in the coming test also score the 180 on 180 i know that some questions might be might be so complicated uh, where we don't uh, expect these questions in the main neat examination well if the paper is uh, with me i try to keep the same pattern but maybe because every teacher has got its own Uh, theme 
and and therefore we should have more and more teachers involved in making the question paper so that you get that diversity hmm? diversity is always good so maybe one or two questions try to do them also and if at all you cannot do that so at least score the highest marks you should be the one who having the highest marks all the very best children god bless you all bye bye ha beta suggest good book for bits practice okay good books for bits practice well uh, you can practice the bits from number 1 uh, there is a book which is called acha have you done the basic basic questions because ncert based questions are present in pearson there is a book by the name rajiv vijay r v rajiv vijay pearson so just see said the questions actually the advantage is he has not copied the question from here and there he has really made the questions maybe some questions are not that up to date language but then they, it will help us to re, uh, revise the ncert if you just read two three pages to the bits the bits will be exactly matching with the theory and it will help you to revise so what's the name r v rajiv vijay assignments yes the important questions which are there i am you know i am just taking them and giving them in assignment that is for sure and if once that is done then finger tips ncert on finger tips is another book which is very good so these two books first step is the r the rajiv vijay r v pearson and second one is mtg which is finger tips all the best guys i'll share the assignments assignments sure so whatever uh, numbers are with me i will share those uh, assignments to all of them and because see we don't we are not only competing with the people in our class you can please share with more people of our class so that maybe some numbers are not with me but if you know them personally you can share with them god bless you bye bye